All right, Donald Trump is facing $354 million judgment, actually $450 million if you add potential back interest. That's a lot of money to pay and a lot of court battles uh, to get entangled in because this is just one of many. Nikki Haley, his challenger for the Republican presidential nomination, joins us from South Carolina. Uh, Ambassador, Governor, very good to see you. Good morning. It's a great day in South Carolina. Um, hi, uh, first off, on these these settlements or, or, or proposed fines, uh, they're pretty hefty, even for a guy as rich as Donald Trump. What do you think? I'm worried about the RNC becoming his personal piggy bank. I mean, I think we saw that he spent $50 million of campaign contributions on his own personal court cases. Now he's taking over the RNC before he's even named any sort of nominee by putting his daughter-in-law as chair, by putting his campaign manager as the director, by them saying they're just going to focus on him. You can give up the House and the Senate. I mean, first of all, I'll tell you, there's no way that Donald Trump is going to win this election. You're going to have a female president of the United States. It's either going to be me or it's going to be Kamala Harris. And if Donald Trump is the nominee, that's what we're looking at. He's going to be in court March and April. He's going to be in court May and June. He said himself that he's going to be spending more time in a courtroom than he is going to be on the campaign trail. That's a problem because Republicans need to win in November. We cannot have a President Kamala Harris. Um, Governor, uh, Lara Trump, the daughter-in-law of which you spoke, had told Newsbacks, I hope I'm quoting correctly here, that every single penny will go to the number one and the only job of the RNC, and that is electing Donald J. Trump as President of the United States and saving this country. What did you think of that? that it's going to go to his legal fees. I mean, that's what he's focused on. The whole thing is is to get out of paying any of these legal fees. And, and you know, it's a fact. If $50 million of his own campaign contributions went to 47 different law firms to help with just personal court cases, you know that they're running out of money, and now the RNC is going to go broke because any com any contributions that go to the RNC now are going to be paying for his legal fees. You know, we don't anoint kings in America. We've got a vote that needs to happen. It's wrong that this is even going in that direction yet. But my focus is, if you look at what happened after New Hampshire, and he went and had this temper tantrum on stage talking about revenge and, and my dress. Um, and then you look at the fact the next day he said anybody that supports her is barred permanently from MAGA. Think about that. A president of the United States, you're trying to bring people in, not push people out of your club. And then he tries to push the RNC to anoint him, you know, as the presumptive nominee. The problem with all, and now he's had this court case and he comes out and he's talking about being a victim. The problem with all of that is the fact that at no point does he ever talk about the American people. At no point is he talking about the fact we're $34 trillion in debt. At no point is he talking about the fact that only 31 percent of eighth graders in our country are proficient in reading. At no point is he talking about a completely open border that he told Congress not to do anything until after he's get, he gets elected because he was worried it would hurt him. At no point did he talk about the lawlessness in our cities. And at no point did he talk about the wars around the world. That's the concern. I have is we can't have this be four more years about him. We've got to get our country straight. We've got to get things back on track. And the party that gets rid of their 80 year old candidate is going to be the party that wins. Mark my words. You know, uh, you've been a lot more vociferous, uh, you know, speaking out against Donald Trump. Uh, you know, uh, there, there's a concern that you're, you're going to damage him if he ends up being the nominee. Do you think that's the case? I mean, that's just ridiculous. First of all, if I got out of the race now, it would be the longest general election in history. We need to look at the fact, what are the American people saying? Not just what I'm saying. What are the American people saying? Seventy percent of Americans have said they don't want Donald Trump and Joe Biden to be the nominees of this presidential. Fifty nine percent of Americans have said they think Donald Trump is too old and Joe Biden is too old. This is not personal for me and Donald Trump. I voted for Donald Trump twice. I was proud to serve America in his administration. This is about the fact that Republicans have to win. And if you look at any general election poll, any of them, Trump is down on Biden by five points, by seven points. On his best day, it's margin of error. 
I'm in every one of those general election polls, and I defeat Joe Biden by up to 17 points. Do you know what that means? That's a mandate going into D.C. to stop the wasteful spending by Republicans and Democrats and get our economy back on track. That's a mandate to get our kids reading again and go back to the basics in education. That's a mandate to secure our borders once and for all with no more excuses. That's a mandate for law and order in our cities, and that's a mandate for a strong America that prevents wars that we can all be proud of. That's what we're trying to do. That's the focus, is we need to start looking at what is going to take us forward. And when you look at majority of Americans disapprove of Joe Biden and a majority of Americans disapprove of Donald Trump, that's telling you everything you need. We need to read well, the writing be, on the you wall. You might be the right, but within your, own, within your own party right now, an overwhelming majority of Republicans like the guy, and he's the front runner. You're quite right to point out, and I've always pointed out the math as well, uh, Ambassador, that Donald Trump has 63 delegates. You have 17 right now. Last time I checked, you need 1,215. So you're both a long way from that. You're quite right to point it out. But people talk about momentum, that if you do poorly in your own state, where you were a very popular two-term governor, uh, that then it's lights out. What do you say to that? that uh, and again, we haven't seen polls post some of these latest uh, you know, payments that Donald Trump is going to have to make. Maybe that could change stuff. I don't know. But how do you feel about that, that losing big in your home state puts you in a very tenuous position? I mean, my focus is this is bigger. This is not about my political career. Everybody loves to say, oh, this is hurting her. Poli this is not about my political career. This is about the fact I don't want my kids to live like this. I don't want anybody's kids to live like this. It's too much chaos. This is the focus of we're going to close that gap in South Carolina. And the day after South Carolina, I'm headed to Michigan. And three days after that, Michigan votes. And within 10 days of South Carolina, 20 states vote. What is everybody so afraid of? Why don't we let those states vote? Here you've got a situation where it is very clear by polls, by court cases, by everything else, Donald Trump cannot win the general election. It's all there. We can like him all we want. I have no issues with him personally. But if he can't win, guess what that does? That gives us a President Kamala Harris, and we should all, that should send a chill up our spine. This is about America. And you look at what's happening, whether it's any time he goes off the teleprompter, he gets completely unhinged. And we don't know how many more unhinged moments he's going to have. Look at what he did just in Conway, South Carolina. He went and he talked about the fact he mocked my husband's military. Now, Michael and I can handle it. We're used to being in politics. You don't take it personally. But you mock one person in the military. You mock every person in the military. And you have to understand, these men and women don't deploy because for kicks and giggles. They don't sit there and, and they're not willing to shed blood just for the fun of it. They do it well, I, because I, I it's bigger I, than I get, themselves. I definitely get that, Governor. I definitely get that. But you mentioned before that you supported Donald Trump in two elections uh, because he was the right man for the right time. But personally, in some of the things you cite now, we're very present in, in, in before and through those various elections. He has not changed. Well, he has changed. I think he's gotten more diminished and more unhinged. But I called those things out to him when he said those things. I mean, look, you can read my book. I talk about all the times that I would confront President Trump. The reason we worked so well together was because I told him the truth when no one else would. If he was doing something right, I fought hard, I defended America. If he was doing something wrong, I showed up in his office or I'd pick up the phone and say, you can't do this, but instead you could do X, Y, or Z. I always gave him options. Hmm. The problem is if someone is not there to rein him in, he gets out of control. Look at what he said about NATO. Think about the fact that he went and he said that if they didn't pull their weight, that they would, and then he would not defend them. But he took it a step further, Neil. He went and said that he would, if they didn't pull their weight, he would encourage Putin to invade them. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. Someone who wants to be president of the United States is siding with a thug who kills his political opponents. He's siding with a dictator who arrests American journalists and hold them hostage. He's siding with right. a man who has literally always wanted to defeat America. 
We can't have that. He put our allies in danger who stood with us at 9-11, and he put every military service member in danger when he did that. We'll watch very closely. I, I, I did want more time. I know you have to rush to an event, so I appreciate your time with us, Governor. Uh, Nikki Haley, uh, the presidential candidate, South Carolina primary a week away. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.